Hi, Ken here. Thanks for following the channel and my 67 Camaro build. I've gotten a lot of requests for details on the inner rocker brace, that enhanced fabricated piece that I added to the passenger side rocker assembly. I'm about to start it on the driver's side and uh, gonna share specifics, details, dimensions, and uh, the process on how I went about it. Check it out, thanks. Okay, quickly refer you to my to-do board, but at the bottom I have my measurements referenced and the cross-section sketched. So it's a C profile, here drawn in reverse, a reverse C. The key dimension is the 3 and 1 16th inch vertical there. Uh, the finished out-to-out -out dimension of that profile needs to be 3 and 3 16th inch. In order to accommodate that, and I learned that through trial and error, I measure my panel at 3 and a 16th and then bend along those lines. So the uh, thickness of the material and the radius of the bend that my brake is able to do with a 3 16th inch um, measure, I get a 3 and 3 16th inch out to out finished profile. Uh, the one inch lip is ideal. I give myself a little extra tolerance um, pre-bend at an inch and an eighth. So my overall uh, panel uh, dimension is five and three sixteenths inch. The one and five eighths just becomes the center line more or less of the three and six, three and one sixteenths. Um, nice easy reference for the dimple die. In terms of my dimple die, I use a three inch spacing. Um, two inches out from the front rocker to the center line of the first dimple die worked out well in terms of the openings on that inner rocker flange to give me access and the like so it just worked out well and I'm going to repeat it on the driver's side. I can get into more detail on the dimple die, the size and the process uh, when we get there but uh, here's the dimensions you guys were asking for uh, 3 and 1 16 inch uh, centered in a 5 and 3 16 inch panel um, I'm going to show you how I score the panel and then let's bend it up. So I'm a fan of working smarter and not harder. So what is this? This is my prototype. I validated the dimensions and the bends. Um, this flange is a little long again because it was a prototype and I uh, was just experimenting with the length. So I'm less concerned about the flange lengths at the end, but I am concerned with this dimension so that's my reference point that's my yardstick so as I begin to bend these panels up I reference it against my yardstick to make sure each fold is consistent if it's not you chuck the piece and you start over again but uh, now I do know um, how to get that consistency by scoring my lines uh, to those dimensions that I shared uh, locking it into the brake and uh, with with repeatability I'm able to get that profile locked in but I still maintain this reference piece so here you see my spacing for my dimple dies and measured the center of that vertical flange good to have I'd recommend it why experiment on a full piece create that uh, consistency validate it within the um, outer rocker so you see here juggle camera around there you go perfect fit just like it's supposed to you know very simply how do I ensure a straight score line on the uh, sheet well I clamp a, a piece of angle iron down as a guide for my thin cutoff blade beautiful April day in the neighborhood opened up the garage door okay here's the brake uh, my two foot piece in the brake scored along the edge and here I had some beefy clamps um, just to give it extra support I fight it as I lift it it wants to slip out of there clamps help go slow put pressure back off put pressure back off sometimes I have to realign it um, to persuade it but uh, I get it Two simple folds in the brake along the scored lines and voila I have my first third bent up. What's also pretty cool I have a piece of 
uh, two by three uh, rectangular tubing here. This fits over snug over this three inch profile and tap it down. And this is how I weld the three pieces together uh, and, sh and ensure that it's straight. This is a friction fit on, on this dimension profile. Remember the inside was more or less 3 16 measured, but when I bend it, I do lose some of the width on the inside. So it's roughly about, you know, three inches on the inside and then the three and um, 3 16 on the outside. So I tap it down on the square tubing. I butt the pieces together, tack it, and uh, weld it up clean and grind it on all sides and it becomes an integral um, rail at that point or, or structural channel. Well the, the benefit of a little bit of experience and applying, applying knowledge from the last time I did this on the passenger side. What took me days of trial and error uh, the first time with the understanding of the dimensions and the process I'm speeding through it this time so um, Hopefully you can take away something from this and if you decide to uh, seize this opportunity when you're replacing the rocker so you can speed through it as well. So I have my three pieces uh, butted and clamped on this two by three inch uh, steel uh, section. There's no way when I go to weld this that this uh, these joints shift or move. The three pieces are pinned securely on there and the uh, it's so tight in fact that I use the underlying box or rectangular channel as a dolly um, to firm up my my bends and angles and uh, ensure that where I weld perfectly flush and smooth and away we go um, it's it works out phenomenally well and uh, just by luck is the perfect dimension required to uh, build this puppy okay first joint welded um, all you're doing is stitching together your spot welds I like to use a little hotter setting to ensure I have good penetration through this 16 gauge material uh, one more joint to do and then I can flip it over and any uh, pinholes or open areas on the back that may remain hopefully not uh, but I can then do some touch-up welding from the inside and then grind both surfaces and you'll never know it was in three pieces. Okay, other joint is welded. I'm going to grind these welds down uh, before flipping it over. Let's share with you uh, one of my favorite tools is this DynaBraid air file. Uh, it's not a cheap tool, uh, <laughs> but I'm a cheap guy. Uh, found it on, again, Kijiji. Uh, great place to find quality tools used cheap. At any rate, works marvelously. I put a swivel end on the uh, end, the air coupler, so I can maneuver it into locations. Um, belt of choice. I uh, love these 3M uh, green core abrasive uh, file belts. Uh, 36 grit, uh, just chews through welds, and amazingly lasts quite a long time, and very seldom uh, rip or tear a belt. Um, I would highly recommend those for whatever air file you uh, happen to have. Uh, okay, I'm gonna address these quickly and come back and we'll have a look what's under. Okay, short work of grinding down that weld with uh, the air file. I don't like to take it with the air file down much further than that. Uh, the file with that 36 grit um, belt on is very aggressive and uh, it'll start to chew into the adjacent material. So I always switch to uh, an angle grinder with a Rolox disc to uh, smooth it out. Uh, well, I got it there, I wanna share with you. I've s all my entire air system, all my tools, I have the V fitting on there. This is your typical M fitting. You see the, the difference in uh, opening. These uh, V uh, or uh, high velocity fittings um, are tremendous. I highly recommend them. You get 90 PSI going through this or 90 PSI going through that. You tell me which one your your air tool is going to thrive on. Uh, it's like a air tool tur turbocharged. So um, I've switched everything to the V fitting in the shop. Okay, let's sand that down, see what it looks like, and then we'll flip it over. All right, all sanded, magic. It's gone. Look at that. Very happy with that. 
Don't even have to go back and fill any pinholes. You can see where the joint was because of the uh, width of that flange isn't precise. Uh, the dimensions I gave you earlier, I do like to cut this panel a little bit longer, about an eighth to a quarter inch uh, wider, so that and then center my bends um, and to ensure that um, you know, you'll never line these up because especially at this gauge bending it so I didn't fight it I give it a little extra length and then I'll come in and I'll trim this even along the length um, and you'll never know that it was three pieces so very happy with that weld here's the other joint again um, you know a little bit of a, um, a pinhole there I'm not worried about that um, very nice okay I'm gonna put the camera down flip this or peel this off the underlying uh, support and see what the backside looks like. Okay, flipped it over. Uh, good penetration. But I am going to, uh, the joint is still discernible. Uh, not that it's about cosmetics, but because I have access to both sides, I am going to run a series of um, um, spot welds along that seam and dress it on the inside as well. Why not? Uh, it's structural. I have the opportunity to do it properly. Uh, I'm going to do that. A little extra work, but um, that's the quality I'm after. So uh, we'll come back and we'll dimple dye it after I dress the two joints from the inside. As is the theme for today, I'm walking you through the entire process. So here I've welded the inside, um, just touched up the outside. I uh, split it a bit when I was peeling it off the uh, the underlying structure. So you see here, awesome uh, cleaning, good penetration this time all the way through. Um, I'll clean up and dress this side one more time. Uh, it won't take much. I'm just going to uh, use the file and grind this down. I'm not going to grind it flush. I'll leave that little extra mill thickness of weld to provide a little extra strength there. It is on the inside, buried within the rocker assembly. Nobody's going to see it. And besides, when I do do the dimple die, I space my dimple so I'm not cutting the dimple through the welded joint area either. Um, so uh, with a little bit of exposed weld on the inside, um, it'll just telegraph to me uh, as I lay out those holes for the dimple dies to stay away from it as well. So um, I'll just clean it up quickly and show you the final product and then we're ready to lay out the dimple dies. Okay, laying out the dimple dies. I draw a center line down the uh, support, three inches on center, and drill an eighth inch uh, pilot hole. Then I use a step bit to get it to the proper dimension of the cutter draw bolt and then use the same draw bolt for the dimple die. I'll show you that. Hey, okay, I'll take you through my process how I dimple die. Uh, eighth inch pilot hole, work it out with a step bit to uh, the width of this draw bolt. So you see the draw bolt for the punch and dimple die. A snug fit. I use a uh, Pittsburgh uh, knockout punch set I bought off of Amazon. Works well. Comes with the draw bolt. Uh, goes from half inch to inch and a quarter um, in four four punches. Um, I'm using the one inch punch Oop, because my uh, dimple die, um, the inner flange, you need the one inch opening, and then it's a two inch flared dimple die. I bought my dimple dies from TMR Customs in Canada. Uh, they're in Ontario. Um, big 4x4 supply shop. Um, everything they sell is pretty damn rugged. Beautiful dies. They've worked really well. I bought a set of three or four dies. I can't remember exactly, but uh, these are two inch dimple dies. So first step is drilling the hole. So the draw bolt goes on a bearing. Then you have the cutter wheel, drop it down through, thread on the, um, the cutter by hand. I like to put on a welding glove. I use my heavy duty Milwaukee impact. First thing you do is just simply snug it up. There we go. 
caught my glove. Okay, here we go. There. And that's it. Holes punched. All I do is back out the uh, and it leaves you with a nice little slug. So this slug adds to the pile, creates the one inch hole. I'll finish those off. Uh, the TMR dimple dies didn't come with the draw bolt. So I utilize the same draw bolt and bearing um, on the dimple die. That's the edge that pushes through. So you see that one inch hole sits snugly on the dimple die. Bring the uh, bottom piece down below. Switch hands. You don't thread the cutter up, obviously. The uh, back side, slip it on, thread it on by hand. Thread it on by hand. There we go. Love back on. Again, simply snug it up. There we go. My grunt bottoms out. Back it off. And voila, you have a dimple die. Beautiful. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. Probably take about five minutes. And uh, you have one slick structural channel. Okay. Okay, very quickly, the brace has been formed, dimple dyed, and set into the driver's side outer rocker. You see here, this is where the wheel tub uh, fits in. It's flush with the end of the rocker. The inner quarter structure goes out to about here. That's where the door jam starts. And this part here beyond is the underside of the door. When you open the door, that's what you see. So from the factory, that brace terminated here and was solid. I take that solid notion and I slowly transition to the dimple die. I've kept the rear quarter portion uh, somewhat solid for whatever reason. Uh, along this end, you see where it connects into the A-pillar. I applied a lesson learned from the passenger side. Passenger side, I terminated it here. And then when I realized I could tie it into this flange that gets welded to that uh, door hinge brace, I lap welded a piece and tied it into the brace. Here I've used the excess length of the brace, extended it out. I will trim it here up above those flanges that get welded. And then I will cut it here, bend it up, It'll fit in behind this top of this inner rocker. And then I'll marry those two surfaces together, tying that whole connection into the brace in a much more substantial way. Love it when a plan comes together. Folding that tab up worked out perfectly. Was able to snug it in. I'll be able to spot weld through here, butt weld along this flange, lock it all in. Down at the other end, everything's fitting wonderfully. All I have left to do, I have to form this flared out return that ties the outer to the inner. Um, I'll butt weld that on. Then there's a tab that comes off the brace up and gets sandwiched between the outer and the inner rocker to lock it in place. That's just a simple um, welded tab. Then from the factory, there's a drainage plane here. You see it here, that drainage plane. I have to um, form into the brace. I take that same detail and I copy it three different times. I'll put a drainage plane in here and a drainage plane in here. So there'll be, you know, that similar detail repeated so that any moisture or water that gets in, uh, I'm not restricting its ability to drain. Okay, I'll fab those, that last piece, the tab and the drainage channels, and then we are ready to weld this in. Okay, here's that back flange. You see, when I make it, I make it longer. Then I will score this cut here, and I'll bend it down, and I actually box the end. 
So, um, you know, I'll tie into these flanges here and I'll actually box the end. Here, I'll show you on the passenger um, rocker that's completed. Okay, here's the passenger rocker and you see that whole end is, is boxed in and uh, even leave a little drainage hole at the bottom at the back. Um, this is open here because that's where the wheel well will uh, connect in. Weld, spot weld here, spot weld here. So that uh, wheel tub fills that gap. But this boxing the end against the brace, top and bottom and out, um, solid. Okay, we're back. I'm gonna wrap this video up here. You've seen me install this in a previous video on the passenger side. I'm just showing you now the final enhanced inner brace, the inner outer <laughs> rocker brace with all the tabs on and all the holes drilled and flanges drilled out and you name it, corner boxed. I don't weld this yet until I sandwich the two together because you have to compress the inner and the outer so the flanges line up. And if I welded that now, it would limit my ability to uh, press them together into proper unison. So I hold off on that. But everything's done. I am going to give it two wet coats of Steel-It, the brace that is. I'm going to um, prep all the E-coat off the welded surfaces and then uh, spray those with um, welded as or steal it as well. It's a weld through paint that I've, I'm quite happy with. So um, that's it. So I've taken you through the process, applied lessons learned from the passenger side. What took me a week or so, uh, took me basically two days of labor and material to crank this puppy out, as I'm fond of saying. Uh, very happy with it. Turned out phenomenally well again. Once it's snugged in there, I will be welding it in shortly. And then I can put the rockers to bed and start on the floors. Hooray. Okay, that's it. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Cheers.